Hello and welcome back. I've been asked a lot of questions about the uh, building generator and using Fractal and then analyzing those uh, designs in Power BI. So I'm going to go over that one specific example that I had in a previous video that I barely touched on. Um, so in this example, we want to check out basically how to build a skyscraper um, and then analyze uh, a lot about it, a lot of different information about it, context, height, restrictions, setbacks, those kind of things. So I'm going to fire up Dynamo Studio, the standalone version of, of Dynamo, and we're going to throw in some cubes by the origin, by lengths, by origin. Perfect. I'm going to grab two of those. I'm going to do the integer slider. I'm going to use that twice. And I could do it a third time, but I'm going to use a number slider for the final one. Uh, I'm going to create some custom code. Really simple, really simple, really easy. We just want number of floors times the height of those floors. That'll give us our total height. Next up, we want to count those. So we're going to start at zero. We're going to go to um, of floors by height of floors. This will help spread out those uh, those different uh, cubes or floors, if you will, that we're about to generate. Okay, oh, and then I'll need to create origin points. Probably should have done that first. That's basically it. Okay, now since I want this to be nice and clean and, and easy to use for other people, I'm going to go ahead and rename uh, and reconfigure several of these. So in this case, I need to know the width of floors, and it could be hotel, could be commercial, whatever your project happens to be. It's probably maybe a mixed use of some sort, um, office, some people call it workplace, um, whatever that might happen to be. We want those values to be anywhere from probably 50 feet wide, or maybe if you're in metric, it would be 50 meters, which is different calculation, but um, we'll go up to 150 feet. So we'll go in increments of one. I can do five. Uh, that would be okay. Um, let me think here. The number slider, we want to use that for go to floor height. Uh, the reason I went with the number slider instead of an integer, let's say we're going to start at 12 and go up to we could do 18. And go by 0.1. I always want to be able to come back to this and say if I want to go by 0.33, um, in case I want 17 foot 4 or something to that effect, I can always go back to it. For now I'm going to go in one foot increments. And then finally, the actual number of floors. And again, commercial, hotel, office, whatever that happens to be. Pretty easy to, to sum this up. Now this is going to give me total height for just these cubes. We're going to go to number of floors, and since I named it num floors, I know that's where I need to connect these up to. Floor height, floor height. I'm going to do 13 floors. I should get total height because I'm taking 12 times 13 over here. I'm getting a list of all my floors. Now I just need to connect those points up. Z value there. I mean, Step back just a second here. There's all my all my points. It's quite a few. Now the reason I'm doing this twice is I'm going to create a different set of parameters over here. So I'm going to turn this preview off temporarily as we begin to go down. And now I need to add some length, width, and height. So I've created some four plates. Now I could have done this a, a couple different ways, but this is the, the way I did it for this example. So now I've got my skyscraper, if you will. We can throw twists in it. We can do all kinds of cool pattern things with it. But for right now, we just need to get uh, a couple different uh, height parameters. Uh, the one final thing, since we're going to jump into Fractal, some people haven't figured this out yet. Oops, sorry. Watch the watch node is what actually reports that parameter, right? So if I rename this total height, that's what's going to appear in Fractal. 
So watch now. The other thing is I can set these um, parameters to basically an on-off mode. Do I want to use this parameter in Fractal or not? And if I uncheck it, this parameter will not show up in Fractal. So those are kind of the only two things that we need to, to figure out. So take a screenshot of that, um, play with this, throw, throw in any, any other parameters that you kind of want um, in there. Change the floor to floor heights for your commercials or your hotel floors. The, the next step, of course, would be to uh, stack this on top of another type of mix use. So commercial down here, hotel, next floor, um, and then office maybe at the top, something to that effect. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So once again, don't be too overwhelmed by this. It's really this script, which I just showed you. I went and got some volumes and some, some total areas for reporting parameters. Just copied up, copied up, so on and so forth. Copy down. Well, this one's actually a little bit different. This is all a parameter subset of how many floors there are and how much square footage there is. The parking garage basically built itself. That'll be another example. So once you get to this level, essentially this level, throw in some color, um, do a volume, Basically figure out total area, do a math sum, figure out your total commercial square feet. This will be a reporting parameter. This will be a reporting parameter in Fractal. And let's go ahead and take a look at, at what that is in Fractal. Upload Fractal. Um, something else you'll notice is I, I built around kind of the surrounding context. Let's say the owner also owned these other buildings. Um, they want to do something with it later. These are all um, somewhat live feeding back into this model. And, this model feeding back into them so that client has an understanding of total square footage of all their properties. Um, again, that's a pretty basic uh, parameter. Uh, and then just some other parameters. These, these lines here uh, are obviously streets, um, and then there's setbacks from those, um, those edges. So that controls all the, all the legal requirements of the site. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably have used Fractal. You probably have, have um, some familiarity. You can go ahead and drag these different parameters, different readouts, if you will, to organize it the way you want it to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this over here. And then it just builds like kind of almost like a rendering. You just hit generate and you start generating designs. You'll notice this generated 6,561 designs. I ended up hitting stop on it uh, just because it was, it was getting to be a, quite a few. It's hard to decipher through those designs. Like that, that's a good design, but we all know that that one's not going to meet the performance requirements of the client. So how do we take all this data and all this information, and you know, here, here all this information right here on, on the screen as I hover over this option? How do I quickly decide what option to go with? We go over here for now. Download is uh, CSV, basically an Excel spreadsheet, if you will, right? Grab all those. Now, instead of the 60, 600 designs or, or whatever, I've gone ahead and, and chopped this down um, substantially. Yeah, I think I took it down to like 240 just to kind of prove the concept. I don't need all you know, 60, 600 different designs. You know, it, it'll work one way or the other, um, whether I have 240 or 6,000. The, the process that I'm showing is, is, is uh, universal. So if you don't know how to make a pivot table, you'll notice that my columns have headers. Uh, that are filterable. So uh, in this instance, you know, let's just start a new page. Some people don't know how to do this yet, which I think is, is handy. So I'm just going to grab a couple of these. Let's say you get that CSV file. Um, and it, it probably won't even have these headers in it. Um, I take it back. It will have those. Basically, just grab every single value you can. Hit Control T. Sorry. Control T on the keyboard creates a table. It says you selected this box of these values. My table has headers. So you're going to see this go from blue to have a little kind of pull down menu with a funnel next to it. So now I can start to filter by all, all different values here um, when they were generated, so on and so forth. Pretty simple stuff. I'm going to go ahead and delete that now. So I've got all these values, all these possible different design combinations. How do I actually filter through that? Because this looks like a nightmare. 
of a number of values. It's all these different variables going on. So in this example, I took it into Power BI and had Power BI kind of read those back out to me. I grouped different columns together and said, okay, well, this option is 16,000 square feet of commercial. It's one floor. I've got 2750 hotel square footage, so on and so forth. 28 feet total building height. It's right there. This gives me all the different ratios of number of floors of office to number of floors hotel and number of floors commercial. So I can see instantly that I have a very limited number of commercial floors compared to the other two floors out of all these options. They all kind of look like this is what it's kind of telling me. So how did we get from there to here? Well, as part of this template, I've gone ahead and kind of blanked it out, if you will, and said, here's how you build this, here's how you build this. So let's go ahead and build this really quick. I'll provide the template background. Call this one Black Rose. It's always going to come in a little bit too large, but basically I created this in Photoshop to give me a backbone, if you will, to lay out some, some initial concepts of how I want to view these different design options. So. For instance, this one is just a donut chart. I know a lot of people don't like donut charts. That's fine. I, I find them very interesting. Humans are very fascinated with circles, and, and maybe that's that's why I do it. But we're going to look at really commercial square footage, hotel square footage, office square footage, and, and parking square footage as a whole. Enlarge this just a little bit. Very nice. And we can go through here and we can say data colors. We're obviously in a purple-like uh, series of colors here, so I'm going to stick with those. Gives me all the information I need. I don't necessarily need to know this title here, so I'm going to uh, turn that off. Gives me a little bit more breathing room here to kind of drag this down. And since I've already got that circle in there, I know I can create these things and keep them even, well spaced, uh, and create a beautiful background instead of just throwing uh, kind of garbage diagrams up on up on the screen. We can actually, um, let's say the client had these colors as part of their branding standards. We can actually go in and, and uh, utilize their branding standards for all their data. So, like I said, this template will be available online, um, but we're going to go ahead and go through it. Um, now that you at least have a little bit more understanding of how to build it, I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, but I am going to kind of demonstrate, if you will, the power of slicing through really uh, thousands of, of different designs for this particular project, which is great because then they can go back and pro forma and, and kind of reanalyze it and change everything on the fly. Oh, did you think about this option? Did you think about this option? Well, yes, we basically created every single possible option we'll ever think of based on these parameters that you gave us, we will come up with every single iteration, every single combination possible. So let's say, whoops, we made a mistake. The height restriction in this particular part of the city is 140 feet. So basically that gets rid of all 147 options. So we still wanna maximize what we have on the site. So we go to the highest selection here. You notice we went from 10, 10, one. And 991. So instead of 240, um, sorry, let me step back and show you some math here. 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 10 is 100, 40 times 10 is 40. We'd have 240 different options in, in this case, combinations of options, which is what is being pulled from this Excel file right there. So that's what those numbers represent. So let's go back and we want to get as tall as we can based on our options of our parameters, right? So instead of all these different combinations, we're gonna just give the 136 options. That narrowed it down uh, pretty dramatically. Client's also asking for 22,000 square feet of office. Okay, give me all those options, quite a few less. And then the final requirement is 22,000 square feet of hotel. That way they're both balanced on, on both sides of this building design here. So the mass doesn't look um, out of whack. In this case, this mass is, is a little bit out of whack. They want two even towers, 
on top of the commercial. So they want 22,000 square feet as your option. It's the only mathematical possible combination. Go model that option because all the other ones are a waste of time. And so you're not wasting all this time in, in a different 3D modeling program trying to come up with the correct answer. You might come up with a design, but you might not come up with the design that the client is requesting. That's it. Um, go ahead and leave comments and questions down below. Uh, appreciate your time running through this today, and uh, hope you have a good day. Bye.